hello students uh, now we are going to uh, learn chapter 16 the topic is electroanalytical techniques um, so far um, with the three chapters devoted to electrochemistry you have learned the, uh, the basic principles and also uh, you have learned uh, the ion selective electrodes and potentiometry and the redox titrations okay yeah they are enough okay to uh, to further study the, the uh, advanced knowledge of electrochemistry okay uh, if you are um, well equipped with electrochemical uh, knowledge and uh, basically you don't have any problem to understand the uh, advanced electrochemical uh, chemistry okay and this chapter uh, is devoted to electrochemical uh, techniques okay there are a lot of techniques but uh, in several techniques shown in uh, this chapter um, are maybe uh, are enough for you to uh, understand the how electroanalytical uh, techniques are, are useful uh, to uh, quantitatively analyze uh, the uh, uh, your sample okay as you will see uh, the electroanalytical techniques are very simple and very easy to uh, use and very uh, sensitive and very accurate compared to other techniques like a spectroscopy spectrometry and uh, uh, other um, let me see uh, mass spectrometry okay so electro uh, analytical techniques are indispensable uh, you know, the techniques for modern uh, analysis okay then let's uh, start okay uh, the uh, the front page uh, of this chapter uh, deals with uh, the chromatographic analysis of several sugars okay the title is how sweet it is okay i'll look at this figure first and this is a uh, uh, this column is from the uh, chromo chromatographic column okay and then you will learn the chromatography yeah? uh, maybe in uh, in other course uh, instrumental analysis but now let's uh, simply accept that you have a mixture a solution of several sugars okay and then you want to analyze quantitatively uh, which sugars are there and how uh, much uh, at, uh, they are okay and then chromatography uh, you know, gives you well separated uh, peaks okay uh, well separation and then the question is how to detect those sugars yeah? that are separated already in the chromatographic chromatography columns okay then now here at the uh, outlet of the column now the liquid flows from here to uh, this part okay and then it will uh, exit through this uh, this line okay and uh, since you know, different uh, sugars uh, remain in in a column uh, for different times okay let's assume you have abc sugars okay maybe a sugar comes first and it pass through this part okay and then b and then c okay the question is how to determine you know, the the sugar okay there must be a way to determine uh, the sugar yeah, there are uh, you know many different types of detectors for uh, you know the chromatography and, but the point here is that electrochemical techniques can be applied to detect the sugars that uh, come out of the this chromatography column okay uh, here uh, this is the uh, uh, sensor and here it, it has a channel here and then uh, at the bottom you put uh, in, in this case a copper copper 
working electrode okay and then all the solutions now uh, sweep over this copper electrode okay and when you apply the positive enough potential to this copper with respect to this silver silver chloride reference electrode and uh, let's, uh, assuming that that potential uh, is enough to oxidize the sugars okay and then the sugar molecules after separation and when they pass through uh, or pass on this copper uh, electrode the sum of them yeah, which are very close to this copper uh, surface may undergo oxidation and then oxidation electrochemical oxidation gives rise to uh, a certain amount of current okay so by analyzing current you know the the how much uh, the sugar a is contained in the uh, mixture okay that's the uh, way how it is done okay here let's read uh, the, uh, this this one separation sugars uh, by around exchange chromatography in strong uh, basic solution yeah you, you don't uh, worry about that anyway the, the point is that uh, this chromatography column separates sugars okay detection with an electrode as they emerge from the column okay? the OH groups you know so every sugars have you know the, the many OH groups uh, the partially dissociate to uh, oxygen this anions in uh, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide the anions separation when passing through a column having plus charges detection by copper electrode at the potential of 0.55 volt you know this is uh, the small volt you, you simply apply you know, uh, this amount of volt the potential uh, with respect to this reference electrode and then that's enough to oxidize most sugars okay and then you get the chromatogram yeah which means that you uh, record current versus time okay yeah, here is this is the result okay? and this x x is time uh, here is the zero okay it's it the start time and then uh, this p d peaks first one the the, uh, the compound one comes first eh? because the time is short shortest and then one two three four uh, up to eight all right yeah. and uh, and then uh, you know with uh, electrochemical detection it is not easy to identify the sugars okay and uh, but you can quantify once you know uh, the uh, uh, these peaks corresponding to uh, you know those sugars yeah? and then it is uh, very precise to quantify the, num the amount of sugars by um, you know measuring the area between uh, under this peak okay anyway this one this table shows the uh, sugar concentrations okay. and uh, this one uh, sugar uh, contains you know, sugar solution all the you know these uh, uh, beverages yeah, uh, contain uh, several different uh, sugars like uh, glucose fructose lactose and maltose okay uh, for example Budweiser <laughs> this beer uh, it contains glucose how much 0.54 gram per liter and fructose this amount yeah like that and both dry to uh, doesn't have maltose coca-cola wow you know bravo bingo coca-cola has a lot of glucose and then uh, fructose they uh, uh, give us a sweet uh, taste and pepsi cola also you know almost the same but diet pepsi uh, you know the glucose and fructose amounts are quite small all right yeah this way uh, you can use the electrochemical technique okay as a uh, as a detector for in this case uh, liquid chromatography okay yeah this is the uh, uh, kind of sensor okay and very very sensitive sensor okay Okay, the first topic is electrolysis uh, in Korean. Jeonggi uh, Bunhe. Okay, electrolysis. You apply uh, the voltage or a current mm, to to perform the electrolysis. You know the, the uh, best one is is the electrolysis of water. Okay, mm, 
all knows that auto electrolysis gives uh, hydrogen and oxygen gases. Okay, at the uh, uh, anode, uh, the hydrogen gas is formed, and at the cathode, oxygen gas is formed. The uh, volume ratio is exactly two to one. But now let's uh, uh, consider the electrolysis of electrolytic uh, production of aluminum by whole Eru process. Okay, you know the uh, aluminum is in the indispensable uh, material these days. You know uh, every um, home and every uh, restaurant, okay, have a lot of aluminum mm, foils. Okay, so. Uh, the consumption of aluminum is uh, really, really great. Okay? Uh, in uh, in the USA, uh, the uh, five percent of electrical, uh, you know, uh, energy, and five percent of electric energy, uh, in the USA is uh, consumed for the production of aluminum. All right, it's, it's a really, really uh, a great amount. Yeah? Aluminum is everywhere. So nobody thinks that uh, aluminum is a very important, very precious metal. But long, uh, not that long ago, about two, uh, 200 years ago, you know the uh, uh, the emperor Napoleon, right? That time, aluminum was a very, very precious metal. You know, aluminum was, um, you know, much more expensive than gold. Okay, so it is said that you know, emperor Napoleon, you know, when he uh, uh, you know, had a, uh, had a, uh, when he ate the uh, uh, food with, uh, you know, other people, uh, he used aluminum, uh, you know, the uh, spoons and, uh, uh, yeah, forks, right? But uh, others use, he gave others the gold, uh, golden uh, spoons or forks, okay? That time, aluminum was a really precious metal. But these days, aluminum, you know, nobody uh, thinks that aluminum is very precious. Okay? Why? There are a lot of, you know, on, in the, on the uh, earth's surface, there, there are a lot of you know, alumina. Okay? Or aluminum ore. Okay? Uh, called cryolite. cryolite okay? Uh, Na3AlF6, okay, sodium aluminum fluoride, okay. The, these uh, ores are uh, so common, so yeah, aluminum is uh, everywhere. But not long ago, it was not long ago that the pure aluminum metal uh, was produced. Okay, let's look at uh, this young man. His name is Charles Hall. Yeah, uh, it was when he was a 22 years old. That time he uh, he uh, just graduated from uh, Oberlin College in Ohio. Okay, this Oberlin College is not a uh, very famous college. Okay, a small college. But uh, after graduation uh, from this college, he invented uh, the uh, aluminum production method. Okay. So he contributed to society a lot. Okay. Electrolysis is a chemical reaction okay, which is focused, forced to occur at an electrode by imposed voltage, or not only voltage, current. Okay. Current can be applied also to do the electrolysis. When you apply voltage, you usually measure the current. Yeah? When you apply current, usually you measure voltage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in a previous uh, chapter, uh, chapter um, uh, fifteen, you uh, or fourteen, you learned potentiometry and potentiometry current is virtually zero. But uh, strictly speaking, uh, potentiometry, the current is not absolutely zero, but almost zero. Okay. But in electrolysis, you apply uh, the voltage usually, and you measure current. So current is not zero. All right. And uh, here is the uh, 
uh, fundamentals of electrolysis. Okay, let's uh, uh, learn how the electrolysis is being done. Okay, uh, this is a basic setup. Okay, let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, this electrochemical setup uh, in this uh, uh, the beaker. You put two electrodes. Okay, one uh, is anode, the other one is cathode. Okay. But uh, now here uh, we um, uh, we use uh, different terms, okay, anode cathode or uh, in potentiometry reference electrode and working electrode, okay. But in here electrolysis, uh, usually we uh, uh, use the working electrode and counter electrode, okay. Mm. Yeah, depending on. Uh, which reactions are uh, taking place? You know, this uh, maybe a counter electrode can be a anode or cathode. Okay, working electrode can be anode or cathode. Okay, but this uh, name indicates that working electrode is that uh, is the electrode uh, on which our uh, your uh, reaction of interest uh, takes place. All right. Yeah. Oh, let's uh, take a. Uh, closer look at uh, this cell, and here you put a platinum, you know, platinum coil mm, like that, and then uh, on the other side you put copper metal, okay, copper metal, and uh, in the solution you have which one? Copper ions. This is aqueous solution, okay, copper ions, uh, you know, dissolved in water, okay, that's it, and then your purpose is to to what? Hmm? To produce copper uh, metal out of this copper ion. Okay? You, you want to produce copper, uh, in other words, you want to deposit uh, this uh, copper uh, metal on this copper um, metal. Okay? From by uh, reducing this uh, copper ion. Okay? How do you do that? And when the reduction takes place at this electrode and the other electrode, on the other electrode, oxidation takes place, okay? Reac uh, oxidation and reduction takes place at the same time, all right? So what, what is the uh, total reaction? Hmm? When uh, copper ion reduction takes place here, and then some re oxidation reaction must take place at uh, this platinum electrode. Since nothing else here except water and copper ion, okay, and uh, so only uh, oxidation reaction at this platinum electrode is what water oxidation, okay, here water oxidation. Okay, let's um, take a look at uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, reactions at the cathode and anode. Cathode means the, the electrode. Uh, where the reduction is taking place so this one this is copper is now cathode because copper ion is reduced to a copper metal okay and this platinum in this case is anode yeah? oxidation of water takes place okay Ox uh, water oxidation gives oxygen gas and protons and electrons okay and then if you add up these two elect uh, erections and then you can get this net reaction. Water plus copper ion becomes copper metal and oxygen gas and protons. Alright? Yeah. Yes. Now you exercise uh, your knowledge of chemistry and then you know, think about that. You know, water, do you think this water molecule reacts with copper ion to give rise to copper metal and oxygen gas spontaneously no that's impossible you see yeah, it is impossible yeah? you don't need much no chemical knowledge to uh, to decide whether this uh, forward reaction takes place or not okay why you know copper ion simply yeah, dissolved, uh, can be uh, is dissolved in water right that's it nothing will happen okay so how do you drive 
how do you drive this forward reaction? Yeah? To drive this forward reaction, you must okay, you must apply electrochemical energy into this system. Okay? How do you apply the uh, input the electrochemical energy? Okay, it's very easy by attaching this power supply like a battery. Okay, here. And then now question is the you know, battery also have two terminals, yeah? This positive terminal and negative terminal. Okay, which terminal to which electrode? Yeah? Since your purpose is to uh, you know reduce the copper ion here. And then this is a reduction. Reduction means what? Uh, you have to negative terminal of a battery to the this copper electrode, okay? And this positive terminal of the battery must be put connected to this platinum wire, okay? Yeah, you see, uh, this uh, you know, direction is really important. Yeah? Okay, but what if you 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 reverse uh, uh, this polarity, right? Plus terminal to the uh, copper and negative terminal to platinum, what will happen? Copper metal will oxidize into copper iron and water will be reduced to hydrogen gas and hydroxide iron. Okay? Yeah. Think about that. Anyway, to make this electrolysis happen, how much voltage is required if current is negligible? Okay? Yeah. Now, the question is, uh, you know, theoretically, you, know, you can calculate the minimum voltage to drive this reaction. Okay? In other words, you can theoretically calculate the applied voltage, minimum applied voltage. Okay? And you already know that uh, from the electrochemical cell, the cell potential is what? Hmm? Cathode potential minus uh, another potential. Okay? The same principle uh, applies here also, okay? E equals E cathode minus E anode, all right? But in this case, you know, the uh, electrochemical uh, reaction is not uh, spontaneous, okay? So you have to apply the voltage. But you know, in the previous chapters, since we already uh, we've only considered the spontaneous reaction and you know the uh, you know the, the cell voltage is automatically uh, is developed. Okay, but here is a different. You know, this forward reaction uh, cannot be done automatically and spontaneously. So you have to apply this uh, the power supply to supply the uh, uh, you know, electrical energy uh, between these two electrodes. And then now, uh, yeah, we are going to calculate uh, this uh, you know this open circuit voltage. Yeah. With no current, okay. Okay, let's uh, temporarily stop here.